is, is, is anybody out there? Is anybody there? Am I alone? Uh, hmm. Wait, I'm not. I have my, my Walt hat with me. <laughs> That's okay. Nobody's going to try anything. I've got a brush. On that note, hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to turn. I'm in black light, but I do have some little bit of bleed in this room because it's still, and now I'm blind. <clears throat> hi, everybody. Welcome to a very unusual episode. Uh, I did do a blacklight a work on a blacklight painting uh, months ago, um, and I didn't have the black lights hooked up yet. And I actually had them uh, sitting on my lap, and I almost dropped them. But now they're up above. Two uh, four footers in a double fixture, and I've got the painting laid out, which is a very unusual painting, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, <laughs> but Jamie, hey, good to see you too. Uh, I should put my glasses on. But actually, it, it, <coughs> <laughs> as RJ dies, wait a minute, I'm going to have a drink. Wait a minute, I got to have some coffee in my avatar mug, which in the black light. <laughs> mm. Slurp. Um, <laughs> and if you didn't hear that story before, when we were at Disney World uh, in December, I um, saw that mug and uh, realized from the uh, colors on it that it probably glowed in the black light. And they had mugs under the black light across the the other side of the store. So I took the mug, the avatar mug over, put it under a black light, sure enough, and I told the uh, uh, hostess there, the host, the cast member, I'm thinking of ghost hosts, the cast member about it, and she goes, well, we need to move those over there. I says, yeah, you're going to get more sales. Um, the, Larry, the black, thank you, RJ, the black light master. I want to put my glasses on so I can see you who's all coming on here at the moment. Uh, and um, come on, move. There we go. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Hey, Ed, good to see you. And and Johnny and Tobias and, wow, well, just all, everybody's on here. Um, Nadesha, Nadeshda. Am I, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Ellen, Susan, Rick, well, everybody's on here. Well, we're having a party. Okay, well, let me tell you. Okay, here's here's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to give a chance for more people to come on before I start to paint. And you can actually see I put a couple of uh, splashes of uh, black light color on here and because uh, I was testing. And I'm going to paint some of the background, and I'll paint some on the dress and I'll explain that again in just a little bit. But I do want to show you a couple of uh, cool things. Uh, we got this from our, our friend, Michelle, our uh, Vietnamese friend. And uh, she had a party for the uh, the uh, Chinese New Year. And so it's the year of the dog, which we also then found out Suzanne and I were born in the year of the monkey, which is good, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I just thought you'd like to see that. And um, also, I wanted to point out too. Just hang in there. I'm going to paint soon. Hi, Tina in England. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> so, uh, but Suzanne uh, wrote a really good blog, uh, and it's um, uh, sr ogren at dot blogspot dot com. And this one is called Never a Dull Moment in This House. So if you want to know what goes on every day in this house, uh, her studio, her study is upstairs where she does all her writing. Of course, my studio is downstairs where I do all the painting and other weird things. Um, but uh, please take a look. at It's short. It's only like five paragraphs. Um, I am going to read a chapter from The Design of Fear. I've got a good one that I picked out, which I'll which will fit. But I did want to show you this real quick. Um, 
look at this. This is from my cousin, uh, Eva Eckenberger in Sweden. Uh, we, thanks to her, reconnected. I've been trying to connect with a family in Sweden for many, many years. Our grandmothers were sisters. The person standing up is Esther Hertig. That was her maiden name. That's my grandmother. Uh, and this was nine years after she came over uh, to Ellis Island in 1912. And uh, she married uh, an Ogren. And here we are. So, and that is her sister with her, a younger sister, um, Hilma. Isn't that cool? I love that. That is so neat to be able to find out more about my Swedish history. And we're hoping someday to go over and, and visit them in Sweden. All right, uh, quick, quick, quick. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna paint here because I think we got enough people coming on. Oh, good point. Phineas, Ezra, and Gus, the hitchhiking ghosts. Uh, I've been asked this before, um, and I looked some stuff up. Apparently, they got their names from uh, cast members working in the mansion because I gotta tell you, I never heard that. We never heard that working at the, in the seventies. So that is something more recent when they were named. Um, and no, they are not the same figures that are um, in the stretch room painting in the quicksand. But uh, I just thought you'd find that interesting. How's that for a tidbit of stuff? Uh, Want to see my business card? <laughs> that actually, that background is... Uh, from the uh, Treasures of the Walt Disney Archives that was at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago some few years back. And I painted 150 feet of black light pixie dust swirling around as you came into the show. Enough of that. Okay. Let's get on to this. I'm gonna, I'll read a little bit later uh, from, from that chapter, but let me explain what's going on here. Okay. This is a very special. Uh, stretch room uh, painting of the ballerina. Uh, the face on it is going to be the face of actual person uh, that this is for. Uh, inside the umbrella, I believe, or outside, I haven't decided which, I'm painting a scene from Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, her skirt is much shorter because she's wearing leggings, and this side is. Uh, R2-D2 and well, C-3PO and on the other side it's R2-D2 on the stretch. Yes. And you can't see the bottom of the painting. This would, I'd have to move this so far away for you to see the whole thing. But of course the alligator is down there um, and I will be painting the black pearl in the water in the distance and uh, a pirate flag with something special on it. <laughs> And I did leave this, I, yeah, you can see, I sort of see it. You can see where her, her original leg of the original character is over here. I had to shift the legs over because I never really thought about it before doing these, is that the actual figure, her legs are, are off center with the rest of her body. So once I shortened the skirt, I had to move her legs over and change some things. All right, I'm going to... Uh, turn out this light Ooh. um and uh okay first that's better not spill it that's what's funny is the cup glows in black light too <laughs> but this is black light white and i've got uh like yellow these actually are made by Blick, these colors I have. Now the blue in the, in the jar itself isn't glowing much there, but it is quite bright when I get it out. Um, one of my favorites is, is the red, and I've got green. So I have five colors to work with, um, and I mix these with regular acrylic paints. Uh, and these are acrylics, they're made for canvas. They're a black light. Uh, used to be you couldn't find those. Um, Acrylics that we use in the in the uh, attractions at Disney World, Disneyland, you know, all the theme parks use this stuff. They use it in the movies. It's mixed with house paint, and it's uh, actually very thick. This is thick too, but this is special acrylics that I'm using here. 
So what I'm going to do first is I want to mix color for the uh, background. Excuse me. I, I actually have a, a better setup in here now. Well, that. Um, and uh, so you're now seeing me from the other side. I switched. I've got my paint and water and everything directly in front of me so I can turn sideways to work on this. And, uh, and, and this is good anyway because this is my good side. Can't you tell? When I go on stage, I always keep this to the, to the audience. And, and I like my ball cap of, of Walt because it glows in the black light. Uh, I don't wear ball caps too often because um, when I have it on and I grin, I look like Tom Selleck and I keep getting stopped for autographs. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> I make myself laugh. Anyway, all right, what I've got in here right now is uh, just white acrylic paint. Now it's it's shiny, but that's because it is getting the light from the laptop. But if I were to put it on here, see, it's and actually a regular acrylic uh, uh, actually has a, a really dull purple glow to it under black light. But what I am going to do is mix some first some blue where's my blue see i'm in the black light i can't see the colors this is uh cerulean blue i'm gonna put some of this now i'm gonna turn or turn the light back on because you got to see this under both lights if you're trying to paint this way because <laughs> i'm making this so it looks in regular light it'll look like a normal painting turn out the lights Put the black lights on, it'll glow in the black light. And <clears throat> will look really cool. At least that's the plan. Uh, the, uh, the neat thing is if you put in incandescent light or put a, uh, like say you have it in the dining room, the painting, and you have the black lights up and they're on. Uh, but anyway, you can have a dimmer on, on the chandelier light, let's say over the dining table. And you can turn it all the way up, which washes out a lot of the black light. And then as you dim it down, you get different levels of lighting on the, on the painting. And it looks different until it goes all the way down. It's just a really neat effect. Um, so there you go. There's the, there's one of my fancy cups I think that had honey butter in it. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to take – I squeeze quite a bit in there because I need this background color. And I gotta save it. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of blue to start with, and and oops, wrong end. See, funny things happen in the dark and semi-dark. So I'm mixing that up. You can see it's turning blue. And now I'm gonna really blind you because I'm gonna turn this light on. Yeah, because I want to see my color. Um, for a better light here, make sure I have the right color. Oh, that'll work nicely, yes. Okay, that's that color. Now, to make it glow in black light, I now have to add black light blue to it. And this will change it a little bit. Oh, and I got to point out to you that the, you see the white there? That's black light white that I put on. Watch what happens when I turn the light on. <laughs> it disappears. You can't use, you can't be mixing colors and doing stuff in regular light and just add black light white to it and think it's going to work because when you turn the light on, you have to use acrylic white, regular acrylic. Now I'm going to put this huge tube of black light paint a little bit in there. And then I'm going to add some black light white to it. It's going to look cool. 
Okay. I can see how it is. Okay. Now we're going to mix that up. And I'll probably have to add more, but let's see what it looks like now. Okay. Oh, starting to glow. And I'm getting paint all over my hands. I'm going to turn out this light. All right. Now there's your black light color. And I am gonna I am gonna lighten that up a little bit more. I'm gonna put some more black light white in it, and a little more of the black light blue. And come on, get out of there. Oh, there we go. And this will lighten it up considerably. This will look good. You see it swirl. Okay, if this, you know, I'm, I wish the room was darker, I'd have to actually do a show at night. Okay, that's even brighter. Look at that. That's nice. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now, <laughs> RJ's going weird on us. Now, I'm going to take <laughs> some more. Acrylic white, if I can figure out where I put it. There it is, acrylic white, just regular acrylic. Because I need to have a, um, a, a lavender color. And you'll see why, because I'm going to put both colors on for this background. Okay, got that in there. Now we're going to put a little bit of the let's go to regular light again. See, this is what I have to do. I've got to go back and forth. Now I'm going to put a little bit of the blue, regular acrylic blue. And now I'm going to use uh, cadmium red deep hue. Not deep hue, deep hue. And put a little bit of that in and see what we got here. By the way, always had um, dark colors to light. Don't try to start out with the red and the blue and then start adding white to it. Pretty soon you'll have a, a lot of paint that you don't need. Okay, wait a minute. Anybody asking questions here? What, I thought it was shiny because it's wet. Oh, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Um, no, it's shiny because of the of the additives that they use in it. Um, Oh, Ed, love honey butter. Yeah, I know. It's hard to find. Uh, hi, Sarah. And Olivia and Ken and just everybody's on here. And, oh, wait a minute. When you do a painting. Okay, Ed, when you do a painting, is everything sketched out beforehand or do you just add things into the painting as you go? It kind of gives a chance to use the imagination. Um, I sketch, I sketch it all out, but then, uh, some things I add, I, I'm, this is my basic layout. So I'll add other things that are not sketched in, uh, once I start painting. So it just could be a, a layout idea, basic. Okay. Now I'm going to mix these colors which should give us a lavender. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, now, that means that I also have to add some um, black light blue to that now. And some black light red. I love the red. <laughs> I may have gotten more than I needed. Uh, 
Let's see what we got here. Okay, we'll have to add some uh, black light white to this. Yeah, I know, I'm adding white after, but I've done this so much, I, I know how much to put in there. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Okay. Now you can see that's all right. Let's turn the light out and see what we got. Okay. Now a little bit. Okay, that's I want more red and blue in there. So this is the black light I'm putting in more of. And put some blue. And then we're gonna paint. Try I can't, I can't get it open. Come on. Oh, darn it. It's the only bad thing about these big bottles is you have to turn them upside down to get it to flow. Okay, let's see what we got now. Let's see what we got in regular light. Okay, now you, all right. <laughs> you probably look the same to you under this light, but they're actually different. And uh, now I'm gonna actually do some painting. <laughs> Woo! Um, get that out of the way. <clears throat> Let me take time to have some coffee. Let's see if anybody else has any question. Or I nope. If I missed a question, I'm sorry. I'm trying to stay up with you. There's just so much going on. It's good coffee. If you've just joined, my avatar mug glows in the black light. I can block out the. <laughs> the only bad thing about this is I get light from the. Uh, from the laptop from the screen. So that messes with this. Now I'm gonna take two big brushes. I'm gonna take the blue first and put some in here. Right around her. <laughs> Pretty. Um RJ's gone wacko. I will paint around the edges, but I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, I'm painting right across the bottom of the umbrella. There are some leaves oh, in this section right there. And even though I've laid her out, I tend to paint into the lines a little bit. And uh, I have to be careful because I start talking too quietly, and uh, which is funny because I'm an actor and when I'm on stage, I'm never quiet. But anyway, all right, let's, let's start with that. Set that there, try not to tip it over. Now we'll take the other color. And I don't know if you can see that on this or not. I'm putting just splotches of it around and then I'm blending it in. This gives it a really uh, neat look to it. Uh, it's rather than just being a solid blue. And under regular light, See what we got in your regular light. Can you see that? Well, I can see it. So maybe if I back the light up and do that, um, or, or bring the laptop in closer. I'm going to try that. See if you can see what's going on there. Oh, there you go. Now you can see the the uh, color and. 
what I want to do is, hold on, I'm getting my paintbrush and trying not to paint my laptop in the process. Um, but I will blend that out even more. So let me try to keep that right. There we go. So you can see that what I'm doing. Would that help? So there it is under black light. Now let me come in close on the black light. I'm going to paint it right now. And you can see it. It's subtle. Not that subtle. Actually, it, it, you do notice it um, under regular light. I mean, under black light quite well. So I will continue this now. And this around her skirt. Now the short skirt is the top of it is exactly the same as the, the actual skirt of the figure, except I now the actual skirt came way down here, um, but I've shortened it considerably so you can see the tights, and I did sketch in. C-3PO and R2-D2 on the leggings. And looks weird, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> I love working in blacklight. The only thing about working in blacklight, especially in haunted houses, is it can get pretty darn creepy. Because <laughs> you, you in, in haunted houses and working in 3D blacklight, uh, which is the same thing. It's these colors and stuff. But when I apply it, uh, the, okay, I'm down too low now. I'm painting down by her feet and the top of the tight wire. So pardon me for just a second. But when you're doing this in a haunted house or like the haunted mansion, you're working in blacklight. You don't, you don't have regular lights on, and uh, and I'm putting some of the lavender in here that I can blend in. But if you have ever been in the haunted mansion when the lights are on, and of course they didn't used to give tours of the mansion, uh, that was a no-no. That was started by Eisner, giving backstage tours and stuff. Uh, but anyway, if you see it with the lights on, a lot of times, especially in uh, like Peter Pan and stuff, everything looks really strange because it's done, the work is done in the dark in black light. But I have perfected this technique of working in doing a painting or a mural in regular light and black light. So uh, I, and in 3D, as if that weren't enough. Now, I'm going to switch to another brush a little bit smaller here. And let's see, there's her hair. Now this figure still will have the hair of the original stretch room figure, even though it's a, somebody else's face that's on this painting. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Any, oh, okay. Oh, some more stuff here. Okay, let me see what you're saying. When are you coming back to Florida, Jane? Uh, not sure. Uh, actually, we're going to Alabama in April for a, a wedding. Uh, uh, Suzanne's cousin um, that she grew up with in uh, Florida, in Miami, is uh, 
getting their daughter, his and his wife's, let me start that again. Suzanne's cousin and his wife, their daughter is getting married and we're going there for the wedding. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we won't have enough time to visit anybody else. We'll only be there for like a day and a half. Uh, Gail, it's like getting on late today. Did you show the finished squad room? Oh, no, I didn't. It's not quite done, but I that's what I forgot. Okay, uh, after I paint here for a few more minutes, I will show the squad room because that's really looking cool. And actually, I was painting on that this morning. Well, let me see what we can see. I'm going to come up here. And I'm using a smaller brush right at the moment. Uh, it's a round brush. Using a smaller round brush. And face and, and collar piece and there we go okay her shoulder yeah the squad room is going great uh, this painting will be done in the next couple of weeks that I'm working on right now Squad room uh, will be done either uh, I'm going to say it's going to be done Monday. I was hoping to have it done before Monday, but it's looking like Monday. And you'll see why. I, I actually, the last thing I was painting on this morning was uh, Jessica Rabbit. I'm having fun with that one. I'm going to miss working on that, but this is fun too. All right. Um, I'm going to just get some little bit of lavender here. Put in. And what I've already painted, I'll mix in the lavender, the splotches of it, blend it out, switch back to the Big flat brush. Now I've got I've got leaves up here from a tree. They're just roughed in, so I don't have to be precise. Um, I will. There we go. I'm telling you, you got to read Susie's blog. You got to see it because she read talks about art every day, what goes on in the South. And it gets pretty crazy. Every day is different. Every day is fun. Well, not always. <laughs> but, okay, you can't see that because that's actually got the shadow of the thing that's holding the uh, painting in place up there. Okay, like that. And I'll put in some lavender. Can you tell I've been painting a, a bunch of these? Now they used to, when they had to redo the ones in the in the mansions, they used to have an artist would have to paint them each time. Um, and of course, those things actually roll up like a uh, uh, like a window shade, and uh, obviously, over time, they start to wear out and they can rip, which we had to watch for. We could do a quick repair, but once that happened, uh, if that happened and it got caught up in the mechanism or anything, which which happens sometimes, not too often. But of course, then they would want to put a new one in. Well, of course, thanks to uh, modern day technology and uh, the way they can do prints now on, on canvas, they don't have to paint them anymore. So now they always look exactly the same. Interesting thing was, as different artists painted them, uh, there were subtle changes, even though. 
Now, the original Mark Davis one was totally different. Um, and I think lasted about three years uh, before they had to put new ones in. And then, of course, they just turned it over to uh, Disney artists that painted them full size. And uh, they changed. They changed the, uh, they decided to change the look of them, uh, basically what they've always been. But if you've seen them over the years, uh, when they were still being painted, uh, each artist had, each one was a little bit different. Uh, lavender in real quick. And This is so much fun. I've gone back to the blue because I'm blending in that lavender. Obviously, I'm not going to paint further down because you can't see it. Uh, I do have to paint that down. When it gets down near the alligator's mouth, it switches to all white as it goes down to the mountains in the background behind the alligator. So that's the background. But you can see I have to mix those colors ahead of time. I have to keep those colors because then when I'm painting, if I have to touch up an edge or, or come back in after I've done other things, i got to make sure I have the exact colors. Um, okay. Um, Oh, Larry, uh, are, are, are there different grades of blacklight paint? I bought some from Amazon to paint with the ghosts you sketched for me, but they don't look bright as yours. Yes, there are. Uh, go to, um, let's see, I'm assuming you painted those on wood because they went outside. The best thing you can do is go to a, uh, uh, a theatrical supply place. They usually will have the blacklight paint. You want to get wildfire. That is what you need to use. And uh, wildfire is what you mix with the house paints. That's what, uh, when we were at Disney World, wildfire didn't exist in the 70s uh, and, and early 80s. It was uh, Shannon Glow. And actually, Shannon Glow was fantastic because they had like about 30 or 40 different colors. Uh, whereas wildfire only has about six or seven colors. So you, you to mix black light colors, if you want a specific color, you have to mix your basic colors, you know, your red, green, uh, I mean, your red, yellow, blue. And of course, they have green because green is very hard to get a good color quality, uh, mixing black light paints together. Same with house paints. Um, and if you're, in fact, if you're going to work on a mural and just regular paints, um, house paints, which is what I painted, you want to... Um, uh, buy, I buy basic colors. I'll buy a red, yellow, blue, white, of course, and then I will have them mix a good grass green color for me because it's impossible to mix those house paints together to get a good grass green color. And then also I'll have them mix a brown, a dark brown, and then I get black. Those colors then I can mix any, anything out of those. Uh, the black lights are very similar in that respect. But yes, um, and if you have a, now I don't know if how, we have Blick here, which has great, and I know there, there should be nationwide. If you're gonna paint on canvas, I can go and get Blick paints, uh, and they'll have black light paints. Uh, these are Blick products. And my acrylic tube paint is Blick uh, Studio Acrylics, which are, the, are really good quality. Uh, make sure that it's studio acrylics, not the, uh, Nothing else. Studio acrylics are great. That's what I use. So, yeah, when you try to buy those other colors, um, a lot of times that you want to make sure they're water-based. But most often I've found that the quality of them is not good enough and not bright enough. It's the same with uh, using the black lights. I use fluorescent tubes, the black bulbs, they're really dark blue black because um, I get the best light from that. Although there are theatrical lights now that throw good black light. And that's what, actually what we had at the attractions at uh, Peter Pan and Mr. Toad and Snow White and in the Haunted Mansion. 
very, very, dis very upset years ago to go in the uh, Peter Pan and realize that as the big expensive round bulbs were going out, rather than replace them, they started putting in fluorescent uh, black light bulbs, and it didn't give you the same throw. It didn't throw the light as far. Plus, they looked horrible hanging all over the place. Ugh. I hate it when they try to save money and not do it right. Um, Walt would never forgive him for that. Uh, Gail, it's funny that you got a studio with good lighting and you're painting in the dark. <laughs> I know. He says, I finally have a studio with great light and I'm in the dark. That's good. I like that. So, uh, okay. Oh, we've been going for 40 minutes. Um, I'm going to quickly show you one other thing. Um, and then I, I want to read you that chapter. But. Here's the thing. I've got to have, I've got to have white on her skirt and on her sleeves, on the bottom of her sleeve. So I'm going to put regular acrylic white in the container, and then I'm going to get the black light. You're wondering why it's in the cup. I use so much white that it's just easier I'm trying to squeeze it out. I'm going to try not to pour this on my knees. So I'm pouring the black light white into the regular acrylic, acrylic, acrylic white. Don't you want to know why? Because in regular light, if I just use the white acrylic, you think, well, that looks good. Just do it that. Uh, it won't show up disappears you mix it with everything else but you can't just paint with that if it's going to be in regular light <laughs> you turn the <clears throat> regular light on open the windows or whatever all of a sudden the uh, white disappears now there's white with the the acrylic in it and i'm probably going to make that a little bit brighter so i get a little bit more Oh, it's a good thing I got a lot of white here. I'm going to run out. I got more. Okay. Because I want to show you one thing. Because I'm going to paint a little bit on her skirt. Now, this is the mix of tube acrylic white and black light white. All right? So, I'm going to paint a big section here. This will just be a base coat. And then I'm going to paint the other part with just black light, white. And then, then I'm going to turn the regular lights on, and you're going to see. And the funny thing is, uh, the reason things look so weird, when you work just in black light, like on the attractions, uh, what happens is that your, your eyes fool you. Where you come together and uh, two colors come together, or you might have a black line or whatever, but you actually think you've painted it right up to the edge of each one, uh, and then you turn the regular lights on and you realize that there's a, a gap, a small gap, and you can see behind the paint um, what's on the base of it. Our eyes react funny under the black light. Now, hang on, I'm going to, I'll just get a different brush, that would make sense. Now, this is going to be pure black light, and this will be a little brighter. But this will crack you up. Well, I think it'll crack, cracks me up, come on, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> Okay. I know it's brighter. I probably will add some more of this uh, black light white to the uh, regular acry acrylic white uh, to make it glow even more. 
But anyway, okay, I don't want to paint that now. Because her sleeves up here. Now I'm back with the, the mix. Her gloves are white. The bottom part of her sleeves are white and, of course, gray shading. But So I have to do this with everything. You have to put a base color in. Okay. Okay. All right, you ready for this? Now, ah, almost, almost had the brush with the, with the blue. I'm getting paint all over my hands. <laughs> now, I'm gonna turn, that's, Acrylic white and black light white mixed together. This is straight. I, you're still gonna get some. Uh, no, see, it's not gonna work because I got the black light on. It's still glowing. There we go. This, <laughs> I'd have to, it's too hard to turn the black lights off. I gotta walk around the room to do it. But I'm trying to block out the black light a little bit. Uh, and actually, I don't know if you can see it, you can see through the, uh, you actually can see see the line work I did through the uh, skirt where it's black, light, white. And the other, that's the, both of them together, it's started to uh, paint over that. Now that I've lined there, you can see it there. But uh, let's see now. See, that's another reason I'll turn the regular lights on because a lot of times you can't see when you've got too much paint. Create all these little ridges. Get rid of those. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to see. Hi everybody. Um, okay, I do. I have I have black light paint on my hands. You know when I work on uh, haunted houses, uh, and I have designed many of them over the over the years uh, for the Queen Mary for six years. I did seven haunted houses in black light on the ship and on the pier. Uh, this is the original Queen Mary that's in Long Beach, California. Uh, I did that 2004 was the last year, and then they changed hands, the owners, and they just brought in an outside company uh, to do everything. But uh, anyway, um, I did stuff. In, geez, Del Mar Racetrack, uh, we did a big thing at Halloween. I did Six Flags. I've done stuff for a bunch of them around the country um, and designed small mom and pop ones, too. And, of course, that's what this is about an artist's hauntings and creations from Walt Disney World's Haunted Mansion and beyond, the design of fear. So it's how I painted these different things in black light. Uh, but also it's about what scares me. <laughs> I have the one early chapter is when I was 10 years old and was scared by the movie Them, Big Ants, Giant Ants. So funny. I woke up. This is yesterday morning. My wife says, what's wrong? I says, I just had a dream of a big, huge ant. And I was in a pit, and the ant was throwing cars and stuff down. <laughs> she goes, oh, I'm married to such a weirdo. <laughs> and she then says, I love it. Life wouldn't be fun without it. Uh, Ellen, which is your absolute favorite use of blacklight in WDW? Hmm. Wow. Well, I'd have to say the mansion because there's so many different things going on and you do have a change from regular light to black light to dark areas. And they do that as you're writing too, so your eyes keep changing because when you get into a black light area and, you, and it's constantly black light, then your eyes start to adjust to the darkness and then you start seeing things that 
you know you don't want to see um such as the black duvetine curtains which are a stage curtain they're they're uh, uh, non-flammable which is good <laughs> it's but that's what they use in theater and um uh, uh, but they get dusty they can get just a thin thin layer of dust on them they'll clean them but you know you go by a few weeks and it's got a thin layer of dust and as your eyes adjust you can start seeing those things but the uh so like in peter pan the dark attractions like peter pan and snow white uh, which sadly isn't there anymore in the magic kingdom but that's why the rides weren't that long by the time you came out of the ride that was it that was like in uh, mr toad they'd hit you with flashing lights sometimes again to change uh your eyes and the minute those flashing lights went off everything looked a lot darker but I, yeah, I'd say uh, overall, the Haunted Mansion. Uh, second would be Peter Pan, just because uh, Peter Pan. That's really some pure black light painting. Uh, and uh, them, one of the greats. Yes, Edward. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it did. It's a, you, you, Edward, I know you read this book, so you know the chapter I'm talking about right, right at the beginning. And my uh, sadly very strange uh mother who i think i'm not going to say anything no just won't go there anyway so i'm going to read you this chapter 19 in in my book everybody sit back we're, we're by the fireside i wish <laughs> i'm still under i'm reading under black light and regular light this is funny uh this is i do believe in ghosts and this one is a little bit longer. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's about three pages, four pages. Uh, and it does give you some background here. So in March 2005, Eric and his assistant Brian came to Chicago to attend the annual Halloween convention. And Suzanne and I invited them to have dinner at our home. Now, Eric was the son of the president of the group that then owned the, um, the uh, Queen Mary. Uh, since in fact, right after this year, that's when they sold and everything changed. But uh, we had done work. Uh, Eric was in charge of the haunted attractions, and of course, a lot of other events that happened there too. It was a rare chance for the four of us to socialize. It was great fun, and we finalized ideas that we would be doing for a shipwreck, which is what it was called, Queen Mary Shipwreck, in September and in the beginning of October. We decided to fly out to LA and rent a car there. This will eliminate, eliminate almost a week of travel time and we had grown tired of the long drive each year. Yeah, it would also shorten the time our daughter, Dawn, would be responsible for our home and our dogs. She was a single mom with a full-time job and two small boys, Alex and Christopher, to raise. Um, Alex and Christopher are now six and six, three and 22 and 20, almost 21. Wow. Anyway, Suzanne and I were met at the Los Angeles airport by Sean because we'd flown out there. We had a few days to spend with him and Sandy. Now, Sean is our son um, and uh, Sandy is his wife and they were living in LA. They lived there for eight years, uh, actually um, in, right by Hollywood. And uh, so we would stay with them on the weekends when we could. And we uh, so we stayed with them for the weekend before we started work on the Queen Mary. They surprised us with another trip to the Hollywood Bowl, this time to see John Williams, cool, and a sympathy orchestra perform many of his compositions, including a Star Wars salute, another Disney connection there for us. That was fantastic. And speaking of Disney con connections, we had some with the Queen Mary too, in a matter of speaking. First of all, Walt and his wife, Lillian, had been passengers on, the Queen, passengers on the Queen Mary during its heyday. I have a picture of them hanging in my studio, <laughs> the studio, not there, um, <laughs> of the two of them on the deck of the ship. There were many nights after working long hours that we take a stroll around the decks. I cannot do this without thinking I'm walking where Walt has walked, I'd say. Suzanne always would always smile and nod, 
one night she said to me, well, they talk about all the ghosts on the ship. Maybe he's still walking these decks with you. Yeah, he's at Disneyland, I said. And there were nights when we stood on the stern and watched the Disneyland fireworks to the south. The Disney company had purchased the Queen Mary in 1988. I don't know if you knew that with plans for a Port Disney Resort and a theme park on the pier to be known as Disney Seas. The plans fell through in 1992 when Disney gave up their lease to focus on building what would become Disney's California Adventure. In December 1992, the Queen Mary was closed down. In February 93, the RMS Foundation, with its president Joseph Prevertel at the helm, signed a lease with Long Beach as operators of the property. This was the company we worked for that came to refer to Suzanne and I as part of the Queen Mary family. That, coupled with the Disney history of the ship, was very special to us. By this time, we felt like family because employees of the ship knew us and always made sure we had everything we needed as far as our work was concerned. But in addition, they took special care in other ways. A great example of that occurred a couple of days after we checked in. By the way, we stayed in a beautiful stateroom they gave us every year so we'd be on the ship for anywhere from two to six weeks before we started our first work day in 2005 we went to the front desk to have some jewelry placed in a safe deposit box one of our favorite employees Veronica took us into a room behind the front desk and I placed the items in the box along with these were treasured pieces that had belonged to Suzanne's mother our day was busy we did a walkthrough of the attraction with Eric, met with him for a couple hours, went off property to purchase supplies and food, and had dinner and drinks in the observation lounge. Back in our suite, I had just sat down at the writing desk to begin work on drawings for the additions to the haunted house when the phone rang. Suzanne answered it. Her first response to the caller caught my attention when she said, no, it, it wasn't money, it was jewelry. She hung up almost immediately and said to me, we have to go to see Veronica. She found a fabric bag under the table below the safe deposit box boxes. I think it might be my mother's jewelry. Ver Veronica wants us to come and identify it. She's been trying to reach us since noon. It was now after 7 p.m. We rushed down there and met her at the door of the room behind the front desk area. She took us inside and asked Suzanne to describe what was in the bag. Once she did, Veronica produced the bag and had me place it in our safe deposit box. It was then that she explained that she had discovered it shortly after we left that morning and had put it in her own lock box until she could locate the proper own owner. She had stayed two hours past the end of her shift until she could contact us. We couldn't stop thanking her and later Suzanne wrote a letter to Joseph Prevertel praising Veronica and her extraordinary dedication. She should have worked for Disney. Uh, being, being alone below decks in the engine room and boiler rooms is unnerving. And if you don't know this, the original um, uh, Poseidon Adventure that was filmed on the Queen Mary. Um, and of course, when he's down, they're down in the boiler room and stuff, and at the end of the movie and stuff, and everything else, that's where I was painting stuff. Yeah. Okay, oh, look, I, I told you that. I actually have a paragraph on it. Uh, but anyway, the spaces are massive and there are constant sounds of running equipment along with the pings and creaks associated with the ship, especially one built in the mid 1930s. Scenes in the original Poseidon Adventure movie have been filmed in these spaces. I could envision Gene Hackman hanging onto a huge wheel sized shutoff valve suspended near the overhead 30 feet above the deck. This character was about to die. Oops, spoiler alert, sorry. Uh, probably not the best image to have in my head at the moment. I was, it was, this is when it gets creepy. Uh, it was three in the morning. <laughs> not a good time to be alone. And I was working fast to finish painting more effects, illusions, spiders, their webs, and rats in this haunted space. There were three haunts for Halloween on the Queen. Hey, nice rhyming. Um, Halloween and the Queen. This one was called the Hull of Horrors. I dipped my paintbrush into the paint. A shadow crept across the metal deck I was kneeling on. The shadow darkened my hand. 
Startled, I jerked my hand back and looked up. A ghostly figure disappeared around the corner. Hello? I gulped and stood up. Footsteps. Louder, I said. Hello? Who's there? Trying to sound real brave. I moved cautiously toward, cautiously toward the sound and peeked around the corner. Nothing. The metal floor stretched out before me, solid, solid metal bulkheads on both sides. I could hear footsteps fading at the end of the passage where it jogged to the right. I squinted, trying to see into the darkness. Don't go there. It was a voice in my head insisting that I did not do what people in scary movies always do. They go there, stupid. <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice, I said aloud, out loud. I backed up slowly, but kept my eyes glued to the end of the passageway. I tripped over my paints and fell backwards. My right hand went into the red paint. Brushes and paint went everywhere. Damn it, I said there for a, I sat there for a moment, looking at my blood red hand. Again? <laughs> it's not the first time I've done this. A loud clang on the steel bulkhead beside me made me jump up. I grabbed a rag to clean my hand as I looked around, but saw nothing. Again, I heard footsteps, and now they were coming from below me on the lower walkway. I looked over the metal railing next to me. Hey, you, I yelled at the dark figure that was moving toward the stern. This isn't fun. My outburst faded, as did the figure. It dissolved in the thin air. I gulped. Oh, oh my God, it's, it's a ghost. I was excited and frightened at the same time. Wow. I looked again to be sure the ghost was gone. This had to be the ghost that so many people had seen below decks. Seaman John Petter had died when he was crushed by a closing hydraulic door as he tried to run through the opening, apparently on a dare. He was one of the numerous ghosts that haunt the Queen Mary. He was not the only one I would see aboard the ship. I do believe in ghosts, I muttered as I cleaned up my work area and went back to painting. I do, I do. My right hand kept shaking. Damn, even my left hand is okay. I can paint with both hands. I skill I worked hard to perfect due to, to an, due to an injury I had in Vietnam to my right hand. No good. The left hand was shaking too. Bloody hell. Time to quit and go back to our stateroom and get some sleep. I couldn't wait to tell Suzanne what I'd just been through. She woke up when I entered the, in our stateroom suite. You okay? No, yes, I saw a ghost. You what, she said. I described every moment with the ghostly being to my wife. She was so tired, she asked if we could continue this discussion at breakfast so she could go back to sleep. The next morning, morning, I admitted to her, it's creepy down there. I don't know why Eric thinks I need to paint creepy images down there. It's creepy without them. My wife agreed with me. We both spent the morning as we worked in that haunted space, looking over our shoulders and jumping at the slightest sound. We were both quite happy to be done in the engine and boiler rooms. End of chapter. Did I put you all to sleep? <laughs> Everybody's still there. Um, just one of the many crazy things I, 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 I've run into real and imagined ghosts uh, over my lifetime which makes it very funny. And usually when something like that scares me, I say, hey, Fred, bring a hammer. There's somebody here. Fred is my imaginary protector. <laughs> um, okay, let me check to see if anybody has asked anything else that I need to answer. Uh, I only wide awake. Nope, wide awake. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Glad <laughs> Jamie loves it. Oh, thank you. It's fun to do. Um, and I think I've got all your questions. And if not, I will I will check when I go off the air. How long have we taken? Oh, an hour. Look at that. I'm I'm on for an hour, and I finished reading the book, which is available on Amazon. <laughs> I like Stephen Colbert with his book. I love the eyes. Uh, <laughs> oh, and uh, again, I mentioned this last week. We are uh, working on our third book in the series, uh, Together in a Dream, Remembering the Magic, the first two. And this 
book will be written in the same style, uh, alternating chapters, some chapters together, Suzanne and I. And more fun stories and crazy connections to Disney and things done at the park. And on that note, I think I'm going to uh, take my, my little gift from our Vietnamese friend, Michelle, which is for the Chinese New Year. It's a dog uh, hanging on my ear and uh, say au revoir. <laughs> and you notice I hung it on my good side. <laughs> starting to look like either a very creepy person or a pirate. On that note, I'm going to say goodbye. I will be working. Um, I will be working. I, I love to see what somebody just wrote. I, <laughs> I will be doing more on this next Friday. So you'll get to see a lot going on. And I will be in the black light again. So join me next week. And uh, I look forward to it. Yeah, I'm just checking. Okay. I got everybody. I know. Stop talking. Go away, RJ. I'm going to take my, my Walt Disney hat and say goodbye. See you all soon. Bye.